Hey, this is Babs and in this video, we are going to learn how to set up a document and page borders in Inkscape. We will go through some of the details you need to consider for setting up a new document for an optimal workflow. Later, we are going to be using these techniques to prepare data figures, graphical abstracts, posters, t-shirt design, and converting scans of line drawings or images into vector graphics. To create a new document, we need to come up here to File and select New. When you start up Inkscape, you will have these page borders by default. Only the things within the page border will show up in a print or an export. We may have some artwork elements beyond the page border. This is also used by some as a paste board area. You can paste things here you wish to use for your illustration and they will be saved with the Inkscape document. The document property menu is where you can specify important elements for your illustration project. You can get to the document properties menu by clicking on this drop down triangle here on the lower right end and choosing Document Properties. Alternatively, you can get to it by coming up here to File and scrolling down to select Document Properties or by pressing shift Control d on your keyboard. Beginning from the top, you see different tabs you can click on to adjust properties related to their title. On the page, we have different related properties. Under General, you can set the display units. I have mine here, for instance, in millimeters, since that is one of the units I grew up with. But you can set the units in centimeters, inches, pixels, points, and this will apply, for example, on the ruler you see here. If you missed setting your preferred unit here, you could still do so up here directly on the page anytime. Next, we have page size. Inkscape opens with a default 210 by 297 mm A4 page. You can toggle the page type by scrolling through this list and choosing one. You can choose US letter, US legal, and standard academic poster sizes like A0, A1, and A2, other formats like ID cards, business cards, and a score of other possibilities. I am going to scroll back to the top and set it back to default. Below the page size, you have orientation. You can set the page as portrait or landscape. Under custom size, we can define our own document size by setting the width and height. I can type in new numbers here or use the plus and minus menus to redefine how the page should look like. Now, instead of manually adjusting for a custom page size, we could just let the program to resize a page around an existing drawing. For this, I go to File, Open and choose a document I have created for you. You can find a link to download this document in the description section below. I will select all objects on the page and go to File, Document Properties and click on Resize Page to Content. Here, I can manually input how big I want the margins on the left, top, right and bottom to be. And when done, I click Resize Page to Drawing or Selection or use the keyboard shortcut Control shift r You can still adjust the margins on the left, top, right and bottom anytime and resize to have a new page with adjusted margins. I am going to take Control z several times to undo this action. Then I will call the Document Properties menu again, so we move to the next sub-menu. Next, we have the scale in user units per millimeters, and it is very unlikely you will need to change this option, as well as for the view box option below. I have links in the description for those who need to know more about this. 
on the background, you can change the background color. We can change the background color by clicking here and we will see different tabs under which we can change the color. If we select the RGB tab, we notice red, green and blue are all at maximum, technically giving a white color to the background. However, the alpha channel here or the opacity is set at zero. So the background of the page seems to be white now, but in reality, it is technically transparent since the opacity is zero. Now, Inkscape does not use the traditional checkerboard pattern to indicate transparency by default for the transparent page we have here. If you would like to see a checkerboard pattern for transparency, you will need to check this checkerboard background option right here. Otherwise, you can set the background color to any color you want by setting the color values under any of these color tabs and pulling the opacity up to any value above zero. I am going to first pull up the opacity here to 100 and then try and pull the blue tab over to the left and you could try under any of the other tabs to have a fanciful looking background. I usually leave this at default. Once you are done adjusting the background color, close this box out of the way. Next to the background color, you have the border. You can choose to show the page border like I have here. Place a border on top of a drawing or show border shadow. You can also define a preferred color for the border. If I uncheck the border shadow, it will disappear. If I also uncheck the page border, we will no longer see any page border. Let us go next to the guide tab. Guides help you to place or measure objects on the canvas. Guides, when used, appear behind your work and do not get printed. Now, where are the guides found? If you hover over the rulers here to the left or the top or at their ends, you will see this little arrowhead. If you click and drag, you will pull out a guideline. We can pull a vertical guide from the left, a horizontal guide from the upper ruler, and a 45 degree angled guide or diagonal guide line from the ends of the rulers. You could choose to show the guides by checking the box show guide or uncheck it to not show the guides. You could also lock all guides so they are not mistakenly moved from their positions. You can change the color of the guide. Now it is blue. I can change it say to purple and adjust the opacity here below. The highlight color is the color the guideline turns to when we hover the cursor over it. Right now it is set to red. So if I go with my cursor over the line, it is going to turn to red. Like with the guide color, we can also change the color to our taste. We can use guides to help us illustrate or display different objects on the page by a certain predefined offset. With the new Inkscape 1.0, we can duplicate or create guides that are offset by a certain distance or angle from an existing guide or reference object. We are going to see specific use cases in later videos. From here, we can create guides around the page or delete all guides at once. Otherwise, you can delete guides by selecting them and hitting delete or right clicking and selecting delete or just by grabbing them and pulling to the source ruler. Now we go to the next tab, grids. Grids can also help you in positioning and measuring objects on the canvas. We have two options here, the rectangular grid and axonometric grid. Now I am going to select rectangle and click new. And you can see we have a grid here. If you look carefully, you will see the properties of this grid are from a defined grid. This number behind the grid name will be different for you. Here below, you see we can enable a grid, make it visible, 
allow snapping to grid lines will show dots instead of lines for the grid. On the right hand side of the box, we have the units of the grid we can modify. We can set the grid units, origin, spacing, and colors for minor or major grids, and also define how many lines we should have for a major grid line to appear. Now let me move up the spacing to 20 on the X axis by typing it in and hitting enter for you to see how the grid would change. Let me try 20 on the Y axis. I am going to bring both this back to one each. And once a grid is defined, we could call it up by going to view page grid or using the number sign on our keyboard. Some people also call the number sign the hash or pound symbol. This is just to give you an idea how grids work. Later in this series, we are going to define our own grid and use it to make a template for producing data figures and illustrations for professional science and engineering journals like Nature, Cell, Science Magazine, and much more. I am going to click on Remove to remove this grid. Next, we have an axonometric grid. I am going to select it and click on New. We have this grid we can use to create isometric figures. This could be used for creating a pictorial drawing or representations of an object. We will use this to draw three-dimensional objects that will look very realistic. I am going to click on Remove to delete the grid. Next, we go to the Snap tab. Snap to Objects allows snapping if this box is checked. You can allow it to always snap, or you can define a distance below which snapping occurs. Now, the snapping distance is set to 20 pixels. So, if I bring this object closer than 20 pixels, it's going to snap to the next one. Notice that when a snapping point on the object snaps to a target, a small cross flashes at the reference snapping site. Next to this indicator, we see a message indicating what snapping point and snapping target were used. Now, be careful when you use this. It works alongside the numerous settings you have here on the right. I definitely have a lot turned on right now, but the one affecting the snapping behavior we see now is snap to cusp nodes, including rectangle corners. To get exactly the same result like I, you will have to turn on the things I have on here. Now, I will press on the number sign on my keyboard to call up the grids so we can experience the next option. And this is snap to grid. So if I move this square now, you see it snapping to the grid through a snapping point. Like above, you can unselect this action by unchecking the box before it, or you can always allow to snap or allow to snap only when closer than a certain distance. I am going to press the pound key to take away the grids. I will pull a guide from one of these rulers and move one of the squares closer and you will see it snap. The next tab is color. From this drop down, you could select different color profiles. The list used to be very long in previous versions of Inkscape. I have never bothered about selecting one in any of my work, but the color profiles on this list and some you could source elsewhere are based on international color management standards. I have some links in the description if you need to know more. Here on the right, you can link or unlink a color profile for your project. The next tab is scripting. Here you can add external script written say in Python or JavaScript. I have never used this myself since I am a mere end user of those programming languages and do not think most of you will need to. The next tab is metadata. 
And you may be wondering what metadata is. It basically summarizes information about a main data and the main data in this case being our document. Under metadata, you can enter a series of information that accompanies your document as metadata. These include title, date, creator, rights, and lots of other attributes. And finally, under the license tab, you can select different types of attributions. I have links in the description for you to understand the different kinds of Creative Commons or CC attributions here, free art, open font license, and much more. And you can also link a URL describing a specific license. So that was a brief overview of the Document Properties menu showing you how to format a page and document in Inkscape 1.0. In the next video, I will be taking a closer look at the basics of vector graphics so you get more familiar with the process of doing your own illustration. We will look at the first tool here, the selection tool, and how we can use it to select, scale, transform, and rotate objects. We shall also learn how to copy and paste objects. In Inkscape, Objects can be converted to paths, so you can manipulate them in ways you cannot manipulate mere objects. In this slide, we will take a look at the second tool here, the Edit Path by Notes tool, and learn how to access the nodes or anchor points of paths and their handles. Don't worry if you haven't heard about all this before or don't want to right now, I am going to explain them in a super easy way. So I look forward to see you in the next video.